the Philippines, one of the fastest growing economies in the world have experienced a massive growth in infrastructure, digitalization, and retail, among other industries, which has created considerable opportunities for foreign enterprises and investors. In order to meet the expanding demand for various industries, this causes a tremendous building development boom that alters the skylines of several cities throughout the Philippines. Even though Manila is one of the world's largest cities and has one of the highest concentrations of skyscrapers, ranking 11, only behind Bangkok and Jakarta, it still lacks a crucial piece of infrastructure that may change its enormous skyline, a super tall building. Today, almost every country in the world boasts of skyscrapers in their skylines. In particular, our country is now populated with several high-rise buildings spread out in central business districts such as Makati, Ortigas, Alabang, Cebu, and Davao. Beyond these cities however, we have also started building in the provinces to spread progress throughout the country. The skyline of Manila has grown geographically and vertically throughout time. The larger city of Metro Manila has seen this real estate development pushed by the private sector. A building boom that has been made possible by improved macro fundamentals is contributing to the altering skyline. However, a lot of skyscraper enthusiasts in the Philippines are still holding out for a massive tower that would serve as a landmark and put the country on the map of the world's top skylines. So why does the Philippines still lack on super tall structures? Back in 1912, Urbanization spread across Manila, and the eight-story Manila Hotel which was constructed in that year, is regarded as the country's first contemporary high-rise structure. Its ascent significantly altered the look of the Philippine capital and marked the beginning of the metro's rapid and obvious urbanization. Despite the ongoing construction and the resulting high rises, the nation's first skyscraper, a structure taller than 150 meters, was not spotted until 1992. This time, a new architectural epic in Metro Manila was ushered in with the 44-story Pacific Plaza condominium, along Ayala Avenue, which has since been eclipsed by newer and taller skyscrapers. The next significant private high-rise building boom, which started in the 1970s, was represented by the Ortigas properties in Quezon City, Mandaluyong, and Pasig. The Ortigas, Quezon City, and Mandaluyong property region is where the Gokong Way Company, another significant participant, has made significant investments, this is where its shopping malls, BPO facilities, and other manufacturing businesses are situated. Makati City being the financial district of the metropolitan Manila, houses some of the country's tallest structures, including the Philippine Bank of Communications Tower, more commonly known as PBCOM Tower, having a total ground to architectural top height of 259 meters, becoming the Philippines' tallest for 18 years. Makati's recent vertical rise is displacing the low structures built during the city's early stages of development, mostly in the 1960s and 1970s. With the relaxation of the construction height restriction in the 1990s, higher structures were built, even tripling the amount of new space that could be occupied on the original land areas. Today, the majority of brand new structures are roughly 45 stories tall, with the largest reaching 52 stories. In Taguig, there is a place called Bonifacio Global City where a significant new urban transformation is happening. This old Fort Bonifacio, also named Fort McKinley, which was privatized in 1992, is where the most cutting-edge structures are being built. Even with the enormous number of towers being constructed throughout the big cities of the Philippines, no building had yet surpassed the 300-meter mark, until September 2008, when then Taguig City announced that Federal Land, would be constructing a 66-story skyscraper that would surpass the height of the PBCOM Tower which at the time was the tallest building in the nation. With the building's pinnacle height at 318 meter, the hotel opened on January 23 of 2018 becoming the country's tallest tower up to date. Currently, Makati with 75 skyscrapers leads the number with most skyscrapers with at least 150 meters tall in the cities of the capital's national district as of June 2022, followed by Taguig with 40 and Mandaluyong with 32. Grand Hyatt Manila in Taguig, tops the list at 318 meters height, followed by PB Com Tower at 258.6 meters, and Trump Tower Manila at 250.7 meters both in Makati. Despite other development ideas leveling out above 300 meters, no further skyscrapers on that mark have since followed. The race to build a super tall structure in the Philippines began in 1996 with a pitch to build the Centennial Tower, also known as Luneta Tower, which was a proposed mixed-use observation tower initially proposed to be located in Rizal Park in the city of Manila. It was later proposed to be built in Pasig amidst backlash over the original planned site, and was planned to be a memorial to the 100th anniversary of Philippine independence. The Centennial Tower was planned to have a height of 390 meters or equivalent to a 100-story building, and the proposed height was about two times higher than the Rufino Tower, 
which was the tallest building in Metro Manila in 1996. According to a 1996 report, the tower was to be constructed and financed by German firm Walter Bau AG, and was to cost around $200 million or around 5.2 billion pesos. Walter Bau AG stated in July 1996 that it was capable of completing the building's construction by 1998, but these plans were compromised by the Fidel V. Ramos administration's reluctance to give the tower's construction the go-ahead. The project was criticized due to its proposed location, so the National Centennial Commission then decided to move the site of the tower to a lot owned by the Metro Manila Development Authority in the corner of Julia Vargas and Maralca Avenues in Pasig, from the original controversial site at the Agrafina Circle. However, the construction of the project never began, becoming the first heartbreaker for Filipino tower enthusiast. Another proposal was then presented on the early 2000s, the Sky City. Sky City is supposed to be an 80-story skyscraper in Mandaluyong City. It is a joint venture between real estate developer E. Ganzen Incorporated and Sam Buena Realty Corporation. Its estimated height is 335 meters and if constructed, it will become the tallest building in the country. Sky City is planned as a mixed-used skyscraper with a hotel, office space and residential space. Construction was suspended due to a lawsuit filed by a homeowners association from nearby upscale Greenhills East Village. As of September 14, 2005, the Philippine Court of Appeals promulgated a resolution allowing the developers to resume construction of the skyscraper and by 2008, no construction work had proceeded on the excavation area, which is the only completed phase of the project. In 2010, the second division of the Philippine Supreme Court rejected the challenges of the Green Hills East Association, and the developer said that the project now described as a 77-story building with eight basements would proceed. Up until now, there is still that large hole at the intersection of Ortigas Avenue and EDSA, the designers of Sky City Tower envisioned it as the tallest structure in the nation. On the late 2000s, one of the notable project proposal that time is the Pagcor Tower, which was a proposed 650 or 655 meters tall observation tower near Manila Bay, in the city of Paranaque. The tower was meant to be constructed as the landmark of the now-opened Pagcor City or Entertainment City Manila, an integrated leisure area with hotels, shopping malls, convention centers and casinos. If built, it would have been one of the tallest towers in the world. Malaysian conglomerate Genting Berhad is responsible for the concept of the tower, however, in 2010, it was reported that the project was under review after Cristino Naguit took over as PAGCOR's chairman. Naguit has stated that plans for the tower among other projects would likely be scrapped despite continued development of Entertainment City. The PAGCOR tower was intended to be the second tallest structure in the world just behind Dubai's Burj Khalifa, however the project was abruptly abandoned and never carried out. It was said that one of the reasons why it wasn't realized was due to its close proximity to the Manila International Airport where height clearance is required. Despite the tower never comes to reality, the entertainment city now homes the iconic Okada Manila. Another one is the Philippine Diamond Tower which was a proposed broadcast and observation tower that is supposed to be built in the former Manila Seedling Bank property in North Triangle in Quezon City. The groundbreaking for the tower was initially scheduled to take place last 12 October 2014, in line with Quezon City's 75th foundation anniversary. Construction of the tower was planned to take place in mid-2015 and was planned to be completed in 2019. The tower's height was planned to be at 612 meters, to signify the country's Independence Day which is celebrated annually on June 12. It is supposed to be completed in three years and will be open to the public in 2018. The Philippine Diamond Tower is intended to be a prominent landmark for the entire country of the Philippines, not just Manila. It was also intended to pass a city legislation to encourage the construction of the tower. In February 2016, the Japanese government was reportedly interested to invest in the project through the Corporation for the Overseas Development of Japan's ICT and Postal Services with a local subsidiary. China was also reportedly interested in the project and was likely to bid. The tower was expected to cost around 41.4 billion pesos and was supposed to be completed in 2019. However, construction of the tower was cancelled due to unknown reasons when it was shelved out. Construction never commenced like the proposed Centennial Tower and the Pagcor Tower, despite the introduction of digital terrestrial television and ISDBT. The Icon Tower is also a proposed skyscraper at the Bonifacio Global City in Taguig. The building was originally proposed to stand 308 meters tall but its height was later revised to 275 meters and will have 36 floors. The Icon Tower has an elliptical cone shape reducing the cost to make the building resistant to earthquakes and typhoons. Its almost gothic facade or exoskeleton is supported by arches, and its office space is meant to be illuminated by natural light. It will also host social spaces, terraces, and atriums. It was then expected to be erected by 2021, but up until now, there has been no word on whether the project will be pursued. Not in Manila, but there is a proposal to build a mega-tall structure at the city of Puerto Princesa in the island province of Palawan. 
The Princesa Tower which is a proposed 680-meter tall observation tower. Plans to construct the Princesa Tower was first publicized in September 2018 as a project of the Puerto Princesa city government, who wanted a landmark for the city which would be known internationally. The tower is planned to be built at the Santa Lucia Environmental Estate, and was also considered to built in front of Puerto Princesa's new Green City Hall. While in the island of Mindanao, an 88-floor skyscraper SJS Maritime Empire Tower, was proposed by the private funder in Europe to be completed in the next five years in the city of Bislig in Surigao del Sur. Same with the other projects, there are no longer updates on the said supertall tower. According to the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitats, the authority on skyscrapers, we are entering the era of megatall buildings. Megatall buildings are those taller than 1,968 feet. Currently, there are only three such structures, Burj Khalifa in Dubai at 2,717 feet, is the world's tallest building and was completed in 2010, the Shanghai Tower completed in 2015 in Shanghai, China stands at 2,073 feet, and the Maka Royal Clock Tower at 1,972 feet in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, was finished in 2012. By 2020, the number of megatall buildings will more than double with the completion of Shenzhen's Ping and Finance Center in Shenzhen, Greenland Center in Wuhan, Merdeka PNB 118 in Kuala Lumpur, and Kingdom Tower in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, which are all currently under construction. In Southeast Asia, Malaysia and Vietnam are on the race in building super tall structures leaving the Philippines behind on this track. So why does the Philippines still lacks on super tall structures? As we all know, the Philippines is visited by an average of 20 typhoons every year, five of which are destructive and constructing a super tall tower on this typhoon prone region is a huge risk. Being situated on the Pacific Ring of Fire, the country also experienced destructive earthquakes, and Metro Manila as the capital also lies on a fault line and this is one of the considerations in putting up a huge tower. Another is the Manila International Airport is situated near the different business districts of the capital, making it hard to surpass the required building height within its proximity. Other factors includes obtaining building permits in the country is a time-consuming, challenging, and expensive process. The average time to complete the 29 operations is 84 days. As an island economy, the Philippines is reliant on international trade. The cost of exporting and importing is therefore relatively cheap, but the time required to move goods is well above the average. While Metro Manila is considered the Philippines' political and economic hub, its urban planning however, is a mess due to its discriminatory zoning and lack of mobility. Manila is congested and has one of the worst traffic in the region, and it is a burden in putting up a business. Also, barriers to foreign direct investment in the Philippines are highly restrictive. In 2020, the Philippines ranked third most restrictive out of the 84 countries in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's Foreign Direct Investment Regulatory Restrictiveness Index. The country has also one of the highest electricity rates in Asia. Businesses are concerned over the continued increase in electricity rates and the power supply shortages especially during the summer months. Studies have shown that electricity rates for residential, commercial and the industrial sectors in the Philippines, have been significantly higher from between 25% to as high as 87% than its Southeast Asian nation's neighbors. Corruption in the country is also rampant, where more than 60% of the country's top businessmen said that the government should prioritize fighting corruption over other measures to attract foreign investments, reflecting a long-standing sentiment in a country long believed to be plagued by moral rot. Also, the lack of infrastructure to support the growing demands of business sectors is also one of the considerations. By far the most crucial aspect in the eyes of the investor, is ensuring the building will be occupied. As a vacant supertall will never turn a profit, securing leases for these buildings can often be the dealmaker or breaker. Construction time, efficiency and material costs are a few important elements that can affect the price of constructing a supertall. Supertalls frequently have completion dates that are more than 10 years in the future, which greatly increases the risk of market instability. Although, supertall towers are pleasing to the eyes and gives a certain city its identity, there are more efficient ways to make a city grow and prosper and be known around the world without the help of skyscrapers. Though the Philippines has yet to put up a super tall structure, its economy has becoming one of the fastest growth rate in the world, and it is very evident with the growing industries in different areas in the country. A super tall in the Philippines is still highly possible with the growing business centers in Cebu, Davao and Pampanga, and who knows, with the soon completion of the new Manila International Airport 35 kilometers north of Manila, we might finally witness the erection of an iconic tower in the country's capital without the height restrictions.